Let's get started. Uh, let's open with prayer. <clears throat> well, God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your presence with us, for the love you've shown to us in your Son, and, and we pray that you be with us now as we study your word and help us to grow in faith and to recognize that amazing love that you give to us, and uh, may it be a blessing to um, to all of us and, and that we may be a blessing to the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, I mentioned the, you know, talking about the, the iPhone app. The videos from this class will be viewable on that app. Oh, God. <laughs> you have to be good. So, yeah, you're all internet things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have $3 and we can get a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> When did that change? <laughs> I mean, it used to be 50 cents. I know, I know. That just, where did we go? I mean, and that's it. Usually I'll just get water, and but I was cold, so I got coffee, and I went, excuse me. <laughs> it shouldn't cost half as much as my meal. <laughs> yeah, it was all those people would get coffee instead of pop because the coffee was cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They said the coffee bean crop <clears throat> was affected uh, a while back. I heard and that jacked up the price of uh, coffee, even in the stores when you go to buy it. It's yeah. more expensive. Yeah, but you know how many cups of coffee you can make on one coffee bean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I drink. I'm a coffeeholic, so. Yeah, but you also have coffee. to keep in mind that the 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 money that's paid. Um, by those Colombian coffee farmers to the um, cocaine drug lords. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for protection. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so they could actually it's have sad. a crop. Yeah, sad. you have to work those expenses in. But I think it's like milk in this store. The restaurants make more money on coffee than they do anything else. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Genesis 24. Somebody want to read a chunk? It's kind of long. Well, I've got a thing in my throat tonight, so. Abraham was now old and well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The, the Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying, to your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham, and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. <clears throat> then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left, taking with him all the kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram Naharim and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, O Lord God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too, let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. He doesn't ask very much specific or anything. <laughs> See, that's what I would do. Real specific, so I know it's from God. <laughs> but this I will know, that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. Thank you. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came back up again. 
The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels too until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a becca and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Beth Buol, the son of Melka Bor to Nahor. And she added, We have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebecca had a brother named Laban, and he hurried out to the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms and had heard Rebecca tell what the man had said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man went to the house, and the camels were unloaded. Straw, straw and fodder were brought for the camels. <laughs> and it's like they came in camel trailers. They were unloaded. I know what it means. They took the stuff off them, but it just threw me there for a minute. Straw and fodder were brought for the camels and water. Doesn't take much to get you started, does it? (laughs) (laughs) No, not really. (laughs) And men to wash their feet. Then food was set out, set before him, and he said, "I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say." Then tell us, Laban said. So he said, "I am Abraham's servant, the Lord." has blessed my master abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, and camels and donkeys. My master's wife Sarah has borne him a son in her old age, and he has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, You must not get a wife for me from the daughters of the Canaanites, Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my own clan, and get a wife for my son. Then I asked my master, What if the woman will not come back with me? And he replied, The Lord, before whom I have walked, will send his angel with you, and make your journey a success, so that you can get a wife for my son from my own clan, from my father's family. Then when you go to my clan, you will be released from my oath, even if they refuse to give her to you. You will be released from my oath. When I came to the spring today, I said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will please grant success to the journey in which I have come. See, I am standing beside the spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water, and I say to her, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, Drink, and I'll draw water for your camels too, let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water, and I said to her, Please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. So I drank, and and she watered the camels also. I asked her, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, who Milcah bore to him. Then I put the ring on her nose and the bracelet on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to to get the granddaughter of my sister, my master's brother, for his son. Hmm, it's the first time that said that. Now, if you will sh- show kindness and fairness, faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. 
we can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, Send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, Let the girl remain with us ten days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, Do not detain me, because, do not de detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. Send me on my way, so I may go to my master. Then they said, Let's call the girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they went, so they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, O Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebekah and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had come from Bir Lahai Roy, for he was living in Negev. Negev. He went out to the fields one evening to meditate, and he t looked up. He saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted comforted after his mother's death. Right. <laughs> um, so we, we um, skipped over uh, chapter 23, which is the death of Sarah, um, which makes this uh, last verse make sense about comforting him after his mother's death. Imagine this is a blind date. <laughs> uh, you know, blind dates can be pretty rough. Now, just imagine, you know, this is a blind marriage to, to somebody in another country. All right, here's, so here's what we want you to do. We want you to move to another country, marry this guy that you've never met. Okay. <laughs> And, and and she's. They said, you know, do you want to wait? But I noticed there was a lot of gold and silver and clothes and bracelets and mm -hmm. things. So maybe that mattered. <laughs> oh yeah, and by the way, you know, he's no rich. cows, no cows, <laughs> or well, sheep or anything. It's, now it's high class stuff. <laughs> and a nose ring. Yeah, a nose ring. <laughs> yeah. I have um, a friend my age, and um, <clears throat> she was born in Poland, and um, her parents arranged to have um, someone from Poland who was still there come over for her marriage and also her sisters. And um, Greg's um, mother and aunt and uncles, they were all arranged marriages. Hmm. Yeah? It's not that long ago that My grandparents did that. were. Mm -hmm. It's still in, in Germany. India and other places. Mm -hmm. It's still, still yeah. pre-arranged. Mm -hmm. So... You know, and here's the thing. Those marriages have a better um, success rate than the marriages that, that we think of, um, where, where two people meet and they fall in love and, you know. Um, <coughs> I'm not advocating for arranged marriage because I 
you know, can't imagine that while my parents are very happy with my wife, they never would have... Picked her for you? They never would have found her for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. I mean, you know, she didn't live anywhere near us. Mm -hmm. And frankly, <laughs> growing up in Madison, they would have had a hard time finding somebody <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's a different approach to, to marriage It's because it's really the marriage is, is all about the commitment. The commitment is made beforehand, and it's not about feelings. And so, you know, it, it's like if you've seen Fiddler on the Roof, Mm. And and he says, "Do you love me?" And she says, "Do I what?" <laughs> <laughs> and and she's like, "For was it for thirty nine years? I've washed your clothes and you know, and I've cooked your meals and and whatever else." <clears throat> and now you ask me. <laughs> yeah, and, and she's like, "If that's not love, I don't know what is." <laughs> he says, "So you love me?" She says, "I suppose I do." <laughs> and he says, "And I suppose I love you too." <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, and and really, it's it's an understanding of, of what love really is, because love isn't a feeling, um, and and that feelings change over time, and they come and go, and, and things like that, and and um, this is love is you know in, in a biblical sense is commitment. So um, I don't know. My grandparents were second cousins, besides, hmm. and it worked out. They were. To the best of my knowledge, happily married, very tremendous grandparents, and had a bunch of kids, so they had to get along. <laughs> so, you know, you know. mentioned family. Here we have, she is the granddaughter of my master's yeah, brother for his son. Yeah, I was trying to find that. <laughs> yeah, so verse 48. Yeah, I, yeah. Like that. Just, I, I yeah. kind of threw that in. Yeah. All that verbiage, I gotta write that down everything that came beforehand, oh. all that talk. Then it just yeah. Oh, and by the way, it, oh, okay. It's, it's his. He's marrying his niece. <laughs> yeah, they they repeated everything, and it, so it's kind of you know. All of a sudden, wait a minute. Yeah, I had to I, read it again, and I'm still. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm reading this, and I'm Brother, thinking, didn't isn't this the fourth time we repeat? <laughs> what? Granddaughter. Oh, wait, no, it's not, no, it's not a niece because it's, if like it's a, a granddaughter cousin. of his uncle. Yeah. It's far removed. Yeah. Whatever it is. It's, I don't know after yeah. first cousins. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, it's like, like some kind tenth, of a... well, not just once removed, but maybe tenth removed. <laughs> so, right. What about the first? Question. question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Why did Abraham want Isaac not to marry a Canaanite woman? Let's take a look at First Corinthians. <laughs> to the married I give this command not I but the Lord a wife must not separate from her husband but if she does she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband and a husband must not divorce his wife to the rest I will say this I not the Lord if any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him he must not divorce her <clears throat> To 18. Uh, 18. Okay. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. 
how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? <clears throat> or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? <clears throat> Nevertheless, each one should retain the place in life that the Lord assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is the rule I lay down in all the churches. All right. So... So they were unbeliever, unbelievers? Yeah. The Canaanites? Yeah. Mm. The Canaanites believed in false gods. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and and this, you know, we, we see this later on in Israel's history where where God tells them, don't marry the Canaanites. Um, and, and they didn't, I mean, you, gotta, you also have to keep in mind, because people get real uptight about the slaughter and all that kind of stuff, the Canaanites were not just, it wasn't just that they believed in false gods, but the way that they practiced their religion, right, they had temple prostitutes, where you go to church, you drop some money in the in the coffer and then you go in with a prostitute it would probably make our outreach a whole lot easier <laughs> <laughs> well maybe but maybe not there might be some hair pulling going on a little bit of hair snatching bye honey I'm going to church <laughs> oh no you're not <laughs> and we, so we get a lot of male members <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, they, they should come up with that idea in no, in uh, Nevada. There you go. They go to church, <laughs> you, go you know. To church. Yeah. So they're going to the brothel. Yeah. Um, but uh, <clears throat> they would also uh, they set up these furnaces. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I've got I've got really really good Baptist friends. <laughs> they are really really strict Baptists, but they've got this thing. My friend and her daughter. And her two daughters, they like to gamble. I don't know why they. That's the only thing they do. They like to gamble, and they always tell the one daughter's uh, uh, husband because he would have a fit <laughs> that they're going that they're going to a retreat <laughs> and they go down to West Virginia for the weekend and gamble. <laughs> and he thinks they're going to be all these I think religious they have another retreats. Another problem. It's called. <laughs> well, he's an idiot, so that's probably, that's probably why they do it. But it's funny. <laughs> You're thinking about that. Oh, God, like <laughs> Furnaces. So, furnaces, thank you. Yeah. Um, the, the, they, would, they set up these furnaces, these um, <clears throat> sort of stone things, and, um, and they would put their children in them and heat them super hot. And... And burn up the children. Was this the Canaanites? Moloch? Yeah, the, the Moloch. Sacrificing yeah. to Moloch. Yeah, so when you see these rules about do not make your children pass through the fire, that wasn't don't make them walk across a bed of hot coals. That was don't burn them alive. Oh, gross. Right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the creepy thing is not only the fact that they did this, but why they did it. So they could have good crops. Oh, there's a trade for you. Sick. Right? That's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of mentality that God was dealing with with these Canaanites and the reason that God said, you really don't want to get mixed up with these people. Right? Even if you have to kill them to wipe out this religion from the face of the earth, then so be it. You know? when And... When people get uptight about the Bible and God saying slaughter the Canaanites and, and things like that, you know, people get all uptight. They don't realize what we're talking about. God is saying this should not be allowed to go on. You know, God was was intending to basically use um, Israel as His hand uh, instead of just sending fire and brimstone down. Um, and and so he was going to have them do it instead, but they failed the test. Were the Canaanites the one, though, that gave Abraham land, grazing land? And yeah. Thought so. Yeah. He, they let them live among, among them. Let him live among them. Well, it, you know, and that's the tricky thing. It is. You isn't know? It? Because they were good to him. And, you know, and, and he, you know, at the time, 
he was like a guy and you know his family and and whatnot and and if he decided well that's it you know i'm gonna wipe you all out yeah that that i mean okay god is god and and he could have you know he could have done the job but at the same time it, it would have really changed the whole you know it would have had a, a completely different impact on history and um how did he obtain so much wealth he had quite a bit of wealth coming from the the get-go oh did he yeah oh. when he didn't just leave everything when he came oh i'm sorry That's he took the long uh, in entourage with him okay I knew. so so yeah and i thought i'd be read somewhere where he left everything but yeah. No, no, he took his servants and okay. with him. So, yeah, it was quite a creep. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so this is, you know, this is a, he, he doesn't want her, or he doesn't want Isaac to marry a Canaanite woman because he doesn't want to have this influence. All right. Um, but yeah, when they, when they go to get her, yeah, there's quite a bit of money there. So, that I was just, somebody yet just yesterday was asking me about piercings and, and stuff and what does the bible have to say about it and it was funny because i had just been working on this and i said bible talks about nose rings you know so, yeah like, like, really i can't really say a whole lot about it just you know be discreet and you know i think a lot of times it's it's the reason behind things why things are done right right exactly you know about covering your head in a church it's not. I don't think it's so much this law that the woman has to have her head cut. I think it's a matter of pride. I think today, if women wore hats, that would be more prideful because people would be seeing who had the best hat, right? Rather than hair, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Because it was at. covering your head at that time was a sign of modesty, mm -hmm. and if a woman wasn't covering her head, you know, it's sort of like here where she, oh, that's my future husband. Put on the veil, you know. It's this this modesty um, kind of thing, and, and uh, you know, and, and it was like, you know, Paul said, "Don't braid your hair," and, and you know, little girls with pigtails, you know, and, and stuff, and and but at that time, you know, who who were the ones that went around with their heads uncovered and gold woven into their hair and, and all that kind of stuff? It'd be like the prostitutes, and you know, and, and stuff, the 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 disreputable. And, uh, you know, the, the modern equivalent might be like, um, don't wear a short skirt and fishnet stockings or something, you know, and, and hang out and, on, you know, street corners or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, you have to kind of consider the, um, the historical setting and, and what it meant to, to have that, to be dressed like that or whatever. So... We don't, you know, have tassels on the four corners of our clothing anymore either. So. <clears throat> All right. Why did Abraham not want Isaac to go to Mesopotamia? <clears throat> I don't know. Any, any ideas? Well, when I was reading it or hearing it, I was thinking I, I that he m might be afraid that if if he left, any claim that they might have on the land that God had promised to them might have. It was like as long as they were there, they could more easily claim it. I, that's okay. Well, I in a sense, yeah. I mean, here's all right. God told him, all right, leave this land, come to the land of of Canaan, <laughs> and, and he didn't tell them where, but they kind of figured it out when they got there. Um, and so he's saying, no, don't let him go back there. Don't send him back there because this is his home. And don't, don't have him go back there and, and maybe he'll want to stay there. Or, um, you know, and, and, you know, we recognize that God said, you know, this is an act of faith. God said, you're going to come here and you're going to be a great nation. All right. Well, he's got to have a wife to be a great nation. And so therefore... Don't have him go back there. Keep him here, showing our faith in God that, that God is going to provide a wife for him while he's here. And that he's not going to, you know, 
You don't have to go somewhere else looking for an answer to the um to the promise. We already tried that with Ishmael, and that didn't really pan out. <laughs> Right. Well, we're just going to leave this in God's hands. And that's why, you know, he says, well, then you are, um, if, if it doesn't pan out, you're released. Like, you're, um, you can go and, and serve somebody else, even though this is his, his good servant that he wouldn't want to get rid of. It, you're free. You go, you know, um, because, it, and that was just Abraham's confidence that, oh, you know, don't worry about it. You'll find somebody. He said, well, what if I don't? Um, then you're free. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, what impresses you the most about the servant? Anything? Takes good care of the camels. Takes good care. <laughs> I think his dedication to Abraham. I think he he could have taken off with the gold. He didn't. Mm-hmm. Grace for guidance. Yeah. Yeah. He's All right. God. You know. Tell me what to do, you know, and and you'll notice again this emphasis on hospitality. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we see how important this is, and uh, you know it just it strikes me that until this study, I've never <laughs> noticed that thread running through Genesis mm-hmm. on on hospitality, and it's so clear. Over and over again, we come across it. And yes. Which, and, and then that and it becomes important when you get into the New Testament about Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners and, and stuff like that. That's still that whole hospitality and, and, and well, stuff. And they talked about his feet, whether they got washed or not when he came out and yeah. things like that. Yeah. All right, so what impresses you about Rebecca? She knew where her bread was buttered. <laughs> <laughs> She liked jewelry. <laughs> yeah, she liked jewelry. Um, I don't know. It seemed like she, she was, was waiting for this. She, she just, there she was sure no was arguments or mm-hmm. anything. It just seemed like maybe she was, knew something, I don't know, waiting for this to happen, knew something was going to happen, and this is what was God meant for her. Well, you know, she said exactly what the servant had prayed for. Let the girl. Offer me water, water the camels, you know. And so she ended up doing exactly what he prayed for. I think she was behind a tree. (laughs) She was listening to his prayer. Yeah, but it says that he prayed in his heart. That's right. I did 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 see him pray it out Before before I had even spoken the words in my heart or whatever. All right, Pastor. (laughs) Nice try. I was trying to make a little soap opera here. (laughs) Desperate. Desperate housewives. Housewives of Beersheba. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think the hospitality thing, Mm -hmm. just her willingness, even when the the family says, well, let her stay for 10 days. What's with the 10 days? That was an odd. Well, I think it was like, give us a chance to, you know, say goodbye. Um, she must have a lot of trust because hmm. it seemed like that 10 days they were probably going to talk about it. Or you at know? least get to know him a little better. Yeah. 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 Who is this guy that, you we're know. Sending our Do you think they knew who he was? To be, they at least knew who Well, Abraham given that they are family. Because yeah. they're, you know. Yeah. There was at least some sense of, they had, they had, you know, I'm from my servant Abraham, or I'm the servant <laughs> of Abraham and that, and, and it, Oh, Abraham. Okay. All right. He's got a, you know, I usually just imagine the conversation. He's got a son? <laughs> that old guy? Yeah. Yeah, two, actually. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> well, they probably remembered that Sarah was barren. Yeah. Yeah. Because so it they, was a, a real uh, big thing, you know. Right. To... Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> I mean, you know, nowadays infertility is a is a tough thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but back then, it was man. If 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 you're barren, that means that God has you did something to offend Him or or mm-hmm. something because you're being punished. And so, ah, okay. Um, so, but yeah, they said, well, you know, we at least want a chance to say goodbye and spend a little time with her and stuff and. But it's not like she's an hour away and going to 
could take a plane or anything like right. that. Right. Yeah, this home. was she goodbye was forever. Good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is, she might as, been, might as well have been going to another planet. I mean, because there was, they were not going to see her again this side of heaven. And uh, so, yeah, this is a pretty huge deal. And they said, you know, well, what do you want to do? And she said, let's go. <laughs> Anxious to leave the Yeah, house. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this nose ring? <laughs> Man, what else is that? <laughs> now you know where all this piercing came from. Yeah, see? Came from the Bible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, should we ask God for specific signs like the servant did? Yes. Okay. I do. I think it's very dangerous. Why? Because we don't know that He's going to answer us in what we want or what we think. He's going to answer us, but. What if he doesn't? Well, then we can say, <laughs> I know, but you can twist that around and oh, people see, can. I think maybe it's, maybe it's different for everyone. For me, it would be the opposite. I'd be afraid that what I assumed was an answer to my prayer was my own beady, devious little mind saying, yes, Anna Marie, he wants you to do that. You're, you want to do it and you prayed about it. And yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, God said yes. So if I'm not very specific and say to God, you know, make the sky purple or chartreuse or something if you really want me to, or whatever, something like that. I have to for me. Otherwise, I think it's my own thoughts. And and I'm t I told you before, it's getting so God just <clears throat> he sits, puts it in my mind what to pray for. Well, you know, I think that that's the key right there, though. That... <clears throat> this the servant um you know just given the way that this all panned out he was being directed by god what to pray for but i think that that's a, there's an important lesson there too is that you know that we seek the will of god to the point that that we're saying god you know tell me what to pray for and um you know and 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 the the, that whole concept of thy will be done be very central to our prayers and 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 yeah you can you can be at the point where where you're saying god you know give me give me the sign just to um you know for for clarity here um because god has put it on your heart to pray that way you know, I mean, you can't just go, all right, um, you know, how do I, how do I bet? <laughs> you know? Right, right. God, give, give me a, give me a, you know, if, uh. Give me a sign, Father. Yeah. <laughs> if I, uh, you know, if, if the ace is up, you know, <laughs> then I'm going to take that, that there's a 10 card buried, so, you know, <laughs> so I'm going to bet high, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, it's, uh, you know, El Elijah on Mount Carmel um, prayed to, that God would send fire down. Um, and he was pretty confident about it, that that was going to happen. I think it was raining, wasn't it? He, well, they, they, uh, they sacrifice the the ox on the um, on the altar, and then they poured like seven big jars full of water. They, oh, they Maybe dug a trench it. around the altar. The they they poured so much water on the thing that the trench was full of water, and uh, and everything was soaked. And then um, and then Elijah, you know, his prayer is basically, you know, the equivalent of okay, God, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> And it was just that fire came down, burned up the the sacrifice, burned up the water, you know, I mean everything. And um, but Elijah was a prophet, um, and so he was pretty closely connected with the will of God, and and God directed him on 
how to handle the situation. Um, we don't always have that immediate, uh, you know, connection with God's will. Um, but, you know, it may be that some do more than others. And, mm. you know, the prophets, you can tell a true prophet because they're never wrong. Um, mm. But, I mean, you know, there have been times where I've prayed, God, show me your will, and, and, and he very clearly does so. Um, you know, and there's other times where his silence is the answer. Mm. Um, it's a tough question. <clears throat> Like I said, I, I think that's maybe why I, I have would have to see a sign because I'm not like that prophet. Maybe I don't have that real clear. So yeah, I would have to. I would have to have the jar given to me and then have them say, "Do you want your camels watered?" One word after the other. So the camels out there with their tongues hanging that. out. This girl must be the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that, and that's the thing. This was this was really clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, what she was doing was, I mean, this was a woman, and, and you know, and really, what she, what he's looking for is someone who's very hospitable, who's who sort of um, doesn't just do the minimum, but but really lives. Uh, a life of, of um... the things that he's asking for are would be qualities of the person he was looking for. Right. He, he didn't say, "Well, I want a, a virgin to walk with one shoe on and one shoe off." Or, <laughs> you know, it wasn't stupid stuff. It right. was things that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if a person that's would do true. something like that, that's got to be a good person. Yeah. Right. So and yeah, so his request did make sense. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, like when one of my atheist friends says, you know, well, if God is there, then, um, you know, just, I, I just need him to move a galaxy across the sky, you know, and uh, and and then I'll believe. And, and I said, well... He's done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <Some news. laughs> you missed it. Yeah. 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 I, well, you know, I, I'm like, he created it, you yeah. know. <laughs> Put that one there, that one there. That yeah. wasn't good enough for you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and they are all moving at ridiculous speeds, you know, but not fast enough for him. So, but, you know, and I, I said, so, you know, and, and here's what I said. I said, then, then pray for that. All right. Pray for God to reveal himself to you. And, and, and the thing is, I could see God do, doing something, not like <clears throat> suspending the laws of physics and, you know, and, and something like that, which, which God typically does not do. He, he normally works within the laws that he's set up. But at the same time, you know, uh, there was, uh, oh, I can't remember his name now. He's, he's one of the guys that's responsible for mapping the human genome. He was an outspoken atheist. Um, his wife was a Christian. He went golfing with, um, with his wife's pastor one day and, um, and they talked about God and, and he, um, <clears throat> by the end of it, he says, he says, all right, pastor, you've made your case and your arguments are legitimate. I can see, I, I, I don't have an argument against the existence of God. However, I need a sign. Hole in one to do. <laughs> well, they were done golfing. By the way. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, he he said, he said, but I I need, if I'm going to believe this, then I need God to reveal Himself to me. And and the past the pastor says, will you put that in writing? He says, sure. So he kind of you know, pastor writes something up. He goes here, sign it. So he did. One day he's out hiking and he comes across this um, frozen waterfall and there's these three chunks of ice that are sticking out but they all merge into one and he goes the trinity <laughs> and mm -hmm. and there's oh, 
there's a sign. And I said, I'd believe if, if God revealed himself to me somehow and, and, you know, that was what he needed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and so for every person, it's different. Do you think in that situation, he already mm -hmm. believed and was looking for something to, well, to, you know, <clears throat> it's, a, I mean, that's an interesting question because it's, it's, um, where's that line between doubt and faith? Mm -hmm. You know, if, um, you know, when, when, when someone comes along with a with an argument against the existence of God and it kind of stumps me for a while and and it, and it I struggle with it you know do I it, it does that mean that I don't have faith while I'm struggling with it no all right um, and but does you know where where's that line how, how much you know here's faith and here's doubt? And, you know, somewhere in between, you know, even, um, you know, we have, Lord, I believe, help me with my unbelief, you know. Um, it just sounded as though you could make the case for that, that he, he believed, but he, he couldn't give in that easy. And that he was, it could have been anything. It could have been three blades of grass coming together. It could have been anything and hit a. Yeah, just and, looking for something. Right, we say, you know, and that seems, you know, the fact that that at that point he was looking for the sort of straw that broke the camel's back, mm -hmm. you know, sort of thing. So I, yeah, I don't know, and and you know, ultimately, with any given person, we can't say no. You know, you can't you can't point at somebody and say that person has faith or that person doesn't have faith. Only God knows where that line is and and, and can make that distinction. Mm -hmm. Um. I would say that he definitely has faith now. Um, I mean, it, it's transformed his life, and it, and it changes the way that he approaches science and, and morality and bioethics and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been very outspoken as a bioethicist oh. since then. <clears throat> so, um, and he's a genius, which it's... <laughs> that I helps, mean, huh? It's, I, you know, with all the ridiculous arguments out there about that, you know, that stupid people are Christians and, oh, you know, anybody sure. that's smart yeah. would not be. Um, when you've got somebody like that that Have says... they seen me? <laughs> they know. I mean, gee, as smart as I am. All right. Um, <laughs> after me. Good um, for you. <laughs> all right. Um, how has God directed you in life? Any specific signs or, or something more general? Well, I think he's working on all of us here at Shepherd of the Ridge right now. Okay. Good thought. I mean, he's specifically, and I think so. He, he worked on us at, at the council meeting. You know, I prayed and prayed, prayed for that. You know, uh, because people put responsibilities on you and you, you need to be able to do the right thing. And I really struggled with it, and we did the right thing, I think. And he influenced me to do that. Sure. I knew it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be influencing all of us here for, you know, for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. I, I look at, you know, the fact that God sent me to Ohio, you know. Um, it's not the sort of thing I would have picked. <laughs> but for that matter, the fact that I went from my first call to my second one. All right. My first call, I was two hours away from my wife's family, two hours away from my family. I was in the state of Wisconsin. Perfect, huh? I mean, it was. this was like, oh, I had, this could not be better, you know? <laughs> I mean, and it was it was a small town, and I prefer a bigger city, but then I took a call to a town of 200 people, you know? And so, I, I mean, why did I take that call? Why did I leave all of that? Because... <laughs> God wanted me to. It was just like... I, have to, I, I would ask, how did you know that he wanted you? You know, it was like there that was... It would be so hard. It was... We went to visit the church, and they would they talked about what they needed in a pastor and, and what they were looking for and, um, mm -hmm. and kind of where they were at and everything. And, and uh... After that that night af afterward, we're heading to the um, hotel, and um, and my wife says, <clears throat> you know, what they described as far as what they need, it describes you perfectly. Mm -hmm. I said, 
to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, by the time, by by the next morning, it was like there was a hand in the sky. Mm-hmm. It was just you're going, and I went, Iowa. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. <laughs> you know, and so and then, oh, Ohio. You know. Well, that one's easy, though. <laughs> well, I did, though. I said... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just knew. <laughs> well, I mean, and I'll tell you, when when I got the call here, it, it, it didn't take long, you know. It was, it was more... In, in this case, honestly, it was more, all right, God, talk me out of this because I see no reason not to. I mean, you know, we were happy where we were and everything, but it was just like, everything just seemed like really obvious that God wanted us to go here. And uh, and so I was just, and I, was, I was talking to some of my other pastors and, and said, this is, you know, I just got the call, but I feel like I'm ready to answer it already. And I said, well, just give it time, you know? <laughs> Don't don't be too quick to, to jump on it, but you know, is it just you know be praying about it and stuff and like, yeah I am, <laughs> but you know my prayer is talk me out of this if this isn't right. So, um, all right, did God choose your spouse for you? Yes, okay. I think He did. All right. Any any specific reason or just. I think because I I think without Larry I might have gone off into weird directions. <laughs> I, I I was a Christian. I mean, I, I as long as I can remember, I've been a Christian. Um, but I I probably needed his steadying influence. That's well, that's interesting. You guys are good for each other because this morning, oh, um, <laughs> this morning he said that that uh, that you had a, a hugely positive impact on his faith and and you know <laughs> sort of sorry. keeping him um, on the straight and narrow. Hmm. That's nice. No. <clears throat> Anybody else got to choose your spouse for you? Yeah. I had to quit school to find her. <laughs> I mean, I went back and graduated a year later. But if I wouldn't have quit school, I'd have never met her. Oh, interesting. Because she was working at uh, uh, May Company, and she was a salesperson. And uh, I got a job working at the May Company as a stock boy. And I, the department, one of the departments that I handled taking merchandise down to was one of her departments that she worked in. And believe it or not, she was a third choice because there was three blondes working at this particular area. <laughs> we won't let that <laughs> It's preserved for antiquity now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't for, for marriage purposes, but I mean, she was a third choice. I, I asked the first two out on a date, and they, they declined, and I asked her out, and she said yes. And so we went out, and we started dating and that. And, and you know, I, I, cut, I quit going to the Catholic Church because I had problems with the Catholic church, not the, so much with the religion at the time. And so I was basically without a church. She was a Sunday school teacher at, uh, at a Lutheran church in Cleveland where we got married. And uh, so I, she, I, I could see that my parents, it did, their marriage didn't work out, you know, with having two different religions in there because my mom was a Catholic and my father was one of these uh, Protestants, but he was content watching the television on Sunday morning, and that was his church, you know. From, and so anyway, I, I, I just thought that we had to have one religion, and since I wasn't going con- happy with the Catholic religion, I, ch- I took less, you know, some classes and stuff to become a Lutheran, and I've been a Lutheran since, since then, and we've had the Lutheran religion in our family, you know, all these years. Um, right. um a couple quick things to um to wrap up. Um this various parts of the Bible like uh verses thirty four to forty nine can be very repetitive. 
you know, see, we have the story of what happened, and then he recounts the entire story, like, word for word. Yes. All right? So why does it repeat that? Maybe because it's so important. All right. Sort of. You, you, we see this this repetition. It's like in um, in Leviticus where it says, and God told them, set up this lampstand like this, and yada, yada, and And then they did set up the lampstand like this, and then, you know, and, and all right. Keep in mind that that um, early on they didn't have multiple copies of this, so it needed to be memorized in order to be passed on. Oh, and the details, so right. you get the details and you repeat the details, and um, by repeating the details, that makes it easier to memorize. It reinforces it. So there's actually a lot of stuff in. Um, just in the way the Hebrew language is structured, um, that it's designed specifically to be memorized. Um, and it's, it's very, it's, it's almost mathematical the way that it's put together. Um, so, so it's, you know, you sort of get the formula and, and it's much easier to memorize than what we would, um, try to do with English. So... Um, we already talked about arranged marriage. We already talked about um, tying with previous stories with the whole uh, um, hospitality thing. Um, and so the last one is, how does Jesus water our camels? The gospel. Right. 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 So watering the camels, this is sort of going above and beyond. It's, it's one thing to, um, to somebody wants a drink. Okay, fine. It was kind of a hassle to, to draw water up. <clears throat> um, in these big old jars and, and stuff, and so to give a guy a drink of water, all right, fine, you know, have a scoop or whatever. No, I'm gonna water all your camels. All what right, that means do. she's gonna have to multiple times. She's gonna have to, um, you know, drop her big old, you know, bucket or whatever down into this well and stuff, and and it was a lot of extra work. And to do that for a complete stranger is, I mean, as far as showing up <coughs> time. Um, that's, you know, the fact that she was willing to go above and beyond to meet this guy's needs, because his camels would need water if he's out traveling. Yeah. All right. So the fact that she didn't, she volunteered to do that, you know, that shows her her willingness to um to go above and beyond for those in need, and and that's exactly what Jesus did for us. That's the, the kind of person she was. Yeah. So now it'll be interesting. Um, this morning we talked about uh, Jacob and Esau, and, um, and uh, even though we see like what a what a nice person she is and everything, ah uh, yes, she gets kind of scheming after a while. So even though we you know we get this sort of glowing picture of her, uh, she's far from perfect. So we'll see that when we get to that. So any other closing questions or comments? All right, let's close it for. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus, who is willing to go above, above and beyond um, what we would ever expect. Uh, but it was exactly what we needed, and no less than what we needed. And so we thank you for that, for his sacrifice for us on the cross and his resurrection, to give us the assurance of our forgiveness and of eternal life. We pray in Jesus' name.